Howdy friends. It's a beautiful day here in uh, Nap Town and I've been getting antsy. It's cold. It's kind of cold, 41 degrees. But uh, you can't catch them on the couch, you know? So, uh, or maybe you can. If you know how to catch fish on a couch, let me know. I might try that. I'm gonna do a little creek fishing. It's kind of one of my happy places. Little section of Urban Creek. I fish maybe five different sections of this creek, but this is one of my favorites. When we get down there, I'll kind of walk you through it. So I'd walk you through the tackle that I'm using here today. Um, so, sure enough, I left my expensive insulated muck boots in the back of the truck and they got snowed on, so they're wet. A little life hack for you here from back in the sidewalk snow removal days. Just gonna put our feet in some plastic bags and should be okay. And then I've got this uh, real noodly seven and a half foot crappie rod here with the reel, obviously. <laughs> 30 bucks, it's a Zebco. And I've re-spooled it with a four pound line. I got a little hair jig. My wife said that hook is too cute to catch fish on, but hopefully they'll think it's cute. And then this, this rod and reel I just got for like, I don't know, 20, 20, 28 bucks on this little rod and reel. It's a, it's a medium light, but it's a fast action. It's a six foot. And then I got a Fluger reel. And uh, my buddy at uh, Indie Bait and Tackle, they got a great little bait shop. Made me a, gave me a good deal on this reel. So it's a Fluger. And uh, I'm real excited to hopefully feel a fish on there. I got six pound line on here, six pound I think tri Trilene XT or uh, Invisible or something, Invis X, I don't know. And I got this little tiny crayfish lure. It's probably like a 30 second ounce or probably even lighter than that head with a little crayfish. We'll start with that. And then, um, you know, we got all sorts of other little jigs we could try, but I'm probably only good for a couple hours here today. I got my hit bag that I always carry and it's got, you know, bobbers in it and underneath there there's a case with a bunch of jigs, a little hook remover, I got my weights to weigh the bobber down, crappie nibbles, I didn't have time to go get bait today, I pre-mixed one so I got like pink, chartreuse and uh, orange in here and so uh, we'll see if we can convince them to bite on that, so let's get down there. Okay, here's the happy place. I don't know if you have any happy places, but we sure do. No, it's not Gulf Shores, Alabama. That would be nice, but this is the next best thing. I love coming here. <clears throat> I usually get down here like six to ten times a year. So here's why this spot's so great. This is the longest, or one of the longest, uh, deeper sections of creek for a long way. And um, so, you know, it's anywhere from three, like even maybe four to six feet deep over there in spots. And um, the last time I was here, caught some nice crappie, a uh, couple that were in that 10, 11 inch range, which for this creek's pretty big. But last year I was here uh, around this time of year and they were just stacked at the tail end of this pool. So. Um, but I haven't been here for about a month and sometimes there's, well, there's often a lot of bluegill in here and sometimes some smallmouth. But, um, you know, it's a long, slow, deep section. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can tell it's, we're in a warm up, but there's still ice that hasn't melted. It's going to get cold again tomorrow. Um, we've had a bunch of rain and flooding since I was here about a month ago. So it's, you know, it's gotten high and hopefully... Hopefully that's washed a fresh uh, batch of fish in here. That, that usually happens after it gets some high water. And then when it stays low for a while, you know, it eventually gets fished out. The fish move on. And so the pool kind of slowly gets depleted. But uh, given the time of year, I'm hoping that there will be a bunch of, bunch of fish stacked up along there. And uh, I'll just fish from here, cast out that way, and then I might go across and go under that tree and kind of fish that bank but uh 
excited to try out the new this new uh, rod and reel we'll see if we can catch something on the first cast that would be that'd be pretty cool Ooh, this little heron or egret there young blue heron it looks like there's not too many snags in here hey look at that i got grabbed right off the bottom what do we have what do we have huh that's a pretty good looking white bass right there Good looking white bass. We're gonna put him on the stringer. Just in case I get into a mess, mess of panfish. That's a good eating size right there. Every now and then you get into them. Actually, I usually catch white bass down here. One time me and a friend caught like probably 40 or 50 here in two hours. It was amazing. Something hit me on the fall there. Hey, there we go. Another one off the bottom. That's a little, a little small. Yeah, another little white bass. All right, look how he's curling up there. Go tell your big brother about me. Let him know I'm here. What are you doing? Oh, there you go. He didn't know he could swim. <clears throat> now, we'll see if the color that, uh, I think orange sometimes makes fish angry. It's kind of an aggressive color. Sometimes orange is too aggressive, but sometimes it just it just makes them commit. Oh, there we go, another one. Okay, well the white bass are in here, friends and folks. Oh, that's a little small yet. What is that guy? Yeah, it's like seven inches. He's going back. He's going back. They're very pretty, clean looking fish though. They kind of look like a saltwater fish. So far, I'm a big fan of this little rod and reel setup. There we go. What do we got here? What do we have? Well, apparently, folks, this borderline is worth it. If I don't get enough, I can always, I can always let him go off this stringer, but. Number two. If it all of a sudden just like goes up on its side or just starts slowly swimming away, you know, or like away and down, that's usually what a crappie does. And so then the best thing to do is reel your slack in to your line is tight and then set the hook. See, something has it right there. So there we got him. That might be a crappie. Yeah, he's just doing what I said. Sure enough. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We got us a crappie. That guy's probably, well, you know what? We don't have to guess. Why guess when you don't have to? We'll look at our little, uh, Oh yeah, he had a good. We'll look at our little tape measure here on my on my rod. 
Man, he's not quite eight inches. We're gonna put him back. It's your lucky day. See ya. Come on. There he goes. Let's see if we bite it again. That's what they're doing. <clears throat> They want that slow, natural presentation on the bottom. See, there's fish in here. They were hiding. Trying to make me think they were gone. They're not gone. They ain't gone. All right. We've caught them in every color. This has been determined, so. Go back to orange. Yeah. No way, what's this? Wouldn't you know it. Oh, look at that. No way. Tell you what, this crayfish has been on fire today. That's the lure. That is the lure. Oh, look at that. Come on. Yeah. Okay, good. Hey, maybe that was the difference, you guys. Maybe we'll get into some crappie here all of a sudden. This might be a keeper, actually. This might be a keeper crappie. Yeah, that's gonna be a keeper. I gotta go eight. There we go. That might be a bluegill, the way he tugged that down. Now that, that is a real chunky, beautiful bluegill. Wow. Huh. It actually worked having two rods out. Three species and five uh, five nice creek fish on the stringer. I don't know if you saw that on, on film. Hopefully it did. But the way it went down like real quick, like boom, boom. That's usually more what, what bluegill do. That's a pretty fish. Oh, he's probably seven, maybe eight if I stretch him real good, but boy, that's pretty. That's a pretty guy. Well, good. I was just waiting to get into one of them. <laughs> Shoot. Probably missed that. That guy gave a nice little jump. Little jumpity jump. Oh, he really, he really took that. What's this called? Tango, I guess. Let's tango. Let's tango, baby. Medium light, fast. Six foot. Yeah, for the money, I'm, I'm in love with this rod. Field and stream. <laughs> oh, no way. That, man, I hope, I just thought I had a snag. He wasn't fighting at all. It's probably going to be a little keeper. Wow. Well, that was definitely a white bass day. Well, hey, if you've made it this far, I think it's time to call it quits. Uh, that little crayfish lure, little jig hit, that's been dynamite. And the power, uh, 
the little power nibbles anyway thanks for watching thanks for coming along and we'll do it again see ya boy they sure like that little crayfish today man dandy little jig a dandy little jig it was oh look at that now what do we got here oh good thing i turned the camera back on probably a white bass i'm guessing Isn't that a crappie? Dude. Good thing I turned the camera back on. Finally got a decent crappie. He took that down aggressively too. Look at that. A long, lean, white crappie. That's a good one. That's a good fish. Okay. Bad days fishing, always a good day. <laughs> Finally, you know what? That's my last cast. Man, the way that guy took it down and swam with it, I thought I had a smallmouth or a catfish or something. We had a nice little stringer here. Look at this.